Hi, today we're going to look at another leadership theory that focuses on the situation. Focusing on the situation so that the leader can decide what the most appropriate behavior is in a given uh, circumstance. This is called a path goal theory, and from the title, you can probably figure that it's talking about a path to reach some goals. Now, the, uh, the basic theory is that leaders should motivate their subordinates to accomplish designated goals. So this is the first theory that we're looking at that's focusing on motivation. And this is what the leader's responsibility is, is to motivate subordinates. And in order to do that, the leader's behavior should correspond to, first of all, the characteristics which pretty much in this theory means needs of the subordinates and the work setting, the characteristics of the work setting. So given the characteristics of the subordinates, the needs of the subordinates, and the needs uh, due to the work situation, the leader should come up with the right uh, uh, um, leadership style. Now here's uh, the basic illustration that describes uh, this path goals theory. So we've got the, the goal over here. And we start off with the subordinates, and they, uh, uh, they don't need know what to do. But what they need to do is they need to get on the path. They have to get around obstacles, get back on the right path, and end up producing the goal. And so the function of the leader in this leadership model is to help the subordinates make it through this path. And so in path goal leadership, the leader is responsible for defining goals, clarifying the path, removing the obstacles, and providing support so that the subordinate will be motivated to do it. Now this support could be relational support, being with the person, supporting them uh, uh, relationally. It can be status support, making them feel good about themselves, uh, rewarding with a status, uh, helping the uh, a subordinate believe that uh, he or she's competent. Or it can be a material uh, a support also in the terms of uh, reward, salary, bonuses, things like that. So the basic, um, the basic goal of the leader is to help the subordinates do work that will allow them to stay in the effective path to allow them to be productive, to achieve the work goal. So that's why this is called the path goal theory. Now... I didn't really like figure 7-2 in the textbook, so I'm trying to, to simplify it and make it a little bit more clear. And the figure 7-2, this figure, tries to indicate how do leaders figure out what behaviors are necessary to uh, increase worker motivation. And we have two, two inputs. We've got the subordinate characteristics, the worker characteristics, the worker needs, and we've got the task characteristics. And in light of those two things, the leader chooses the appropriate behavior that will lead to subordinate motivation. So we've got kind of like a, a three-step things going on here. The leader needs to look at the characteristics of the people that are under his or her authority, the, the task characteristics, what need to be done, choose the appropriate styles of behaviors, and if they choose the appropriate styles of behaviors, the, the subordinate will be motivated to, to perform and follow that path and accomplish the, the goal. Now, in this uh, theory, um, we've got four types of leadership behaviors. Now, this is different because up to this point, we've been kind of been looking at task, task and relationship behaviors. Now, we've got a more complex model of leadership behaviors. The, the words that this model uses are directive, and so this is task, basically telling the person what they need to do to accomplish the task. There's a supportive uh, uh, group of leadership behaviors, and this is more relational, uh, um, meeting uh, the, the, the socio-emotional needs of the, the person, uh, the subordinate, having a relationship with them. But we have two new dimensions. First of all, there's the achievement-oriented behaviors, and this is where the um, the the leader um, helps the follower 
feel good about their competence, increase their ability, increase their sense of, uh, of, of achievement, that they're a worthwhile worker, that they're capable, increase their self-image. And we can call this a, an identity-focused uh, um, uh, behavior because the goal in this ach these achievement-oriented behaviors are to, is to help the worker feel better about themselves because they're more competent, because they're more successful, because they're doing a better job, something like that. It includes setting high goals. When you set high goals and somebody achieves the, the high goals, they feel good that they've achieved those high goals. And then uh, uh, a fourth type of uh, leadership behavior concerns the process, and it's called participative behavior, the idea of getting the subordinate involved in the decision makings rather than simply telling them what needs to be done, um, getting them involved. And for some people, that's, that's quite important, and for some tasks, that's quite important also. So now we have four dimensions of uh, leadership uh, behaviors, task, relational, identity, and process, with these uh, titles here. And it's interesting, just like task and relational are the two most common dimensions that, that come up over and over again in looking at the psychology of these things, these identity and process dimensions, uh, whenever we're talking about what motivates people or what their goals are, we generally have these uh, four categories. Um, there, there, there are four big categories of what motivates people, of what uh, uh, influences their, their behavior. Um, uh, I'm involved in conflict studies, and we see that there's a, a lot of different goals that people have in, rela in conflict, and a lot of times they're task goals, relational goals, identity goals, or process goals. It's a way of, uh, um, uh, of clearly classifying what people want in different situations. Now, these four types of leadership behaviors, directive, supportive, achievement-oriented, and participative, are measured by the Path Goal Leadership Questionnaire that you'll see in the uh, back of this chapter, and you might want to write your uh, short paper on uh, this questionnaire. And when you do this, choose one specific work situation, and because your type of leadership behavior will change from context to context and answer the questions for uh, for that to see what type of leadership you provided in those different uh, situations. So the subordinate characteristics are one of the two factors that influence what behaviors the leader should choose. Now, some of the subordinate characteristics that this theory has looked at are, first of all, the need for affiliation. And uh, that uh, affiliation is wanting to be close to people. Some people want to be close to others. Other people, that's not their priority. Now, people with a high need for affiliation, they need supportive leadership. They need relationship-oriented leadership. People with a lower need for affiliation would have less of a need for uh, um, the, the friendly and concerned uh, leadership. So that's one way that subordinate characteristics would determine what type of leadership uh, the leader should provide. Another characteristic of the subordinate would be their need for structure. Some people have a high need for structure. They, they need to know exactly what they're supposed to be doing. They don't want any ambiguity. They, don't, they, they tend maybe to be a little bit rigid. They want to know exactly how everything should be done. And so for people that are high in need for structure, they need more directive leadership. They want to know exactly what they're supposed to do because they get a satisfaction out of doing exactly what they're supposed to uh, do. And so that would be uh, an example of when directive leadership would be uh, um, necessary. Um, and the directive leadership is especially necessary if the subordinate doesn't feel capable of the task. Now, if the subordinate feels ca capable of the task, then less uh, directive leadership would be, uh, would be necessary. Oh, let's see. Okay, now another set of subordinate characteristics would be uh, the desire for control. And some people like controlling things. Other people are not too concerned about controlling uh, their environment. And uh, one of the, the terms that we use for this desire for control is called what we call the locus of control. People can have either an internal locus control or an external locus 
of control. So an internal locus of control is this idea that I control my destiny. If I do the right things, I will be successful. And so people generally who have a inter high internal, uh, lo have an internal locus of control, have a high desire for control because they know what they need to do to be successful. And so in, in, with somebody with an, high in, uh, with an internal locus of control, a high desire for control, should allow these subordinates to be in charge of their work and involved in the de decision-making process because they've, they feel like they've got it down. Um, so this would require a participative leadership, not a, not a directive, but a uh, focus on participative where the subordinate can make uh, his or her own decisions. Other people have an external locus of control. They feel like the world controls them. There's a lot of anxiety about what's going to happen. They might not feel that they, uh, they can master the situation. They might often feel like they're, they're victims. Um, and so they have a low desire for control because they figure, no, me trying to control things is not going to make a difference. Um, in this type of situation, the leadership should rel relieve the, the subordinate's anxiety about outside forces controlling uh, the circumstances. And here, again, would be another example of when directive leadership would be appropriate, like when they have a need for structure. If they don't think that their decisions are going to lead to success, but they need outside uh, influence, they want the outside environment uh, just right for success, they want to be uh, uh, directed. Now, the second set of things that influence what a leader's behavior should be are the task characteristics. Now, when we're talking about task characteristics, we're talking about the specific thing that the worker is supposed to be doing. Now, suppose that we have complex tasks and unclear uh, rules. That means there's a, it's a, it's a there's a clear procedure for doing something complex. It's not ambiguous. You don't have to do a lot of thinking uh, about it. It's, it's well defined, but it's easily misunderstood, perhaps because it's so complex. In this situation, a subordinate needs more directive. They need to be told exactly what to do. The supervisor needs to follow to make sure that they're doing exactly what they're uh, supposed to do so that they can, they can do it and get the satisfaction from uh, accomplishing what they're supposed to do. Other things are highly repetitive tasks. The worker will get them down, just do them over and over and over again, and they have to fight boredom. In this type of situation, the subordinate needs a more supportive uh, leadership, a relational aspect to provide motivation to keep on continuing in, the, um, in, in spite of the routineness of everything that's going on. Now, some tasks are ambiguous tasks. They require a lot of uh, brain power, a lot of effort to, for problem solving. It's not clear what the solution is. It's not clear what the subordinate is supposed to do. This type of the ambiguous situations, they tend to call for more participative and achievement-oriented uh, um, uh, leadership. More participative because maybe the supervisor doesn't know how it's supposed to be done either and it's up to the, the subordinate to figure out how to, how to get the task done. Um, and the achievement oriented, if the supervisor, the manager, the leader pl raises the bar and says you can do it and glory and power and honor will be yours if you solve this problem, That'll help uh, provide the motivation to, to work through the issues to find out how to uh, 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 solve the, the problems. Now, when we evaluate this approach, there's, as all these other approaches and theories of leadership, there's both strengths and weaknesses. Uh, the strengths of uh, this model are, first of all, it's useful from a theoretical framework because it has four dimensions of leadership behavior rather than just two. So it gives us tools to analyze what we're doing and thinking, okay, am I more concerned about the, the task? Am I being directive on the relational supportive side? How am I doing? How am I doing in developing the person's identity? How am I doing in the process? Um, it gives uh, four, uh, four dimensions for the leader to evaluate what they're uh, doing. This model also integrates motivation, and motivation is so important. If we want people to, to reach a goal, they need to be motivated to, to do it. And then this is a, a practical model that it 
ba because it basically emphasizes the role of the leader is to help subordinates. The subordinates are supposed to achieve a goal, and the the goal of the 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 purpose of the leader is to motivate them to achieve that goal, to provide the motivation in a lot of different ways so that they will uh, achieve the goal. Now the weaknesses of this model are, in some ways, it's difficult to implement, especially on the spur of the moment. There are so many variables involved that it makes it confusing. However, if you sit down and you analyze the situation and you go through lists of task characteristics and subordinate characteristics, it, you can start getting some good insights on what you're supposed to be doing. And a second uh, uh, weakness here is that there's only partial empirical support. Certainly the idea that if workers are more motivated, they're more likely to achieve the goal is uh, empirically supported. But the idea of like what are the exact needs that correspond to the um, precise uh, leadership styles, that's a, a little less certain. But all in all, this is a great way of uh, analyzing how uh, uh, leadership functions. It, it emphasizes that looking at the, the situation, the task characteristics and the subordinate characteristics, and gives the leader ideas on how they can help the subordinate be successful and achieve the goals that everybody wants.